All right, today is another special episode for you, and this is all about activating your core, because we see so many people doing it wrong, and we're gonna show you today of how to do it right, as well as what people are doing wrong. So we're gonna use Fran here today, who can activate her core, and we're gonna start off with trying to work out how to activate your pelvic floor, which activates your transverse abdominals, which is your deep, core stability muscles that work on trying to stabilize around the spine which enable you to then brace on top when you have to lift so this part we instead of teaching you how to brace first when you have to lift something heavy we go back a step and make sure the pelvic floor is functioning that that's connected to your transverse abdominis make sure that's activating if you get that right then we'll move to the bracing part and the lifting part of something off the floor in the next video so first of all if we use Fran here what I'm going to go through is things that you don't want to do to activate your core. So one thing you don't want to do is to try and hold your breath and brace as hard as you can. Okay, so when people say, oh, switch on your core, we've got to stop thinking about trying to just tighten this area as much as we can. So if Fran just tightened her whole abs totally for me, do that, okay? She braces everything, but she's now holding her breath, okay? So the one thing we don't want to do is people breath holding. So you can't just tighten and then not breathe because you've got to be able to breathe through movement. So if you, when you're doing this exercise, make sure you, you are actually breathing all the time. So the breathing part, we try and work on, okay, you've got to breathe in your rib cage, okay? Not up here, not up high, breathe in your rib cage, this part, we want to make sure this is tightening and bracing, but you are still breathing upstairs. So don't worry about diaphragmatic breathing. So don't worry about the belly going up and down. That's for when you're sleeping, when you're, for, you know, you're relaxing. This is for when we're trying to train and switch on our core. So this part here needs to be toned and tight. This part needs to be mobile and breathing. So make sure you're not breath holding and you're breathing all the time, okay? So when we want to turn on the transverse abdominis, let's work on the pelvic floor first. So for Fran and for males, we want to start working on thinking about holding a wee. So if you're going to go to the toilet and you're going to have to hold a wee, what would you do? Now for females, if you're standing, that's always also, it's a holding a wee, but it's also a draw up. So for Fran, as a female, it's a draw up that way, okay? So when she does that, she wants to have two fingers on both sides or one side and I'll go on this side of on her abdominals okay so just next to the pelvic bone here so this is your ASIS so the anterior superior lax spine so the front of the pelvis there she wants to be just next to that okay and she's over in an area where she'll feel whether her tummy is doming up or hollowing out or tightening and flattening. Now tightening and flattening is what we want. We don't want hollowing out and we don't want doming up, okay? So when she thinks about, I'm going to think about holding a wee and using the muscles underneath that hold a wee, she's monitoring here what she's feeling. And what you want to feel is a little bit of tightening that kicks in after she starts tightening her pelvic floor. So Fran, I want you to take a breath in first Take a breath out and then try and hold a wee and draw that up for me. Good. Now, if you notice, her tummy just, her tummy button just pulled down a little bit, which means she's getting a bit of a connection between the pelvic floor muscles, which are deep in the pelvis, and the transverse abdominis, which is this sheet of muscle here that's under the six pack, under the oblique muscles, that works in this sort of fashion. So when it contracts, contracts like that. So if it contracts correctly, the tummy will actually drop down a bit, it'll tighten, and the belly button you'll see get dragged down because the belly button's attached, right? So it'll get dragged down as the actual tummy is getting dragged down. Now, what she doesn't want to do is think about trying to drag that belly button down as much as you can because if she does that, you'll see what happens. You try and draw your belly button down, what happens? She then goes and lifts her rib cage. So she's trying to suck her whole tummy down. And to do that, she's actually having to lift up the ribs. Now that's messing with her breathing mechanics, okay? It's messing with her core actual stability in there and the actual um, abdominal pressure, the pressure we're trying to create in here. So what you can't do is let that tummy, or think about that tummy button drawing down. You've got to think about the pelvic floor and then you'll watch the belly button go down a little more. So if you imagine this part here can't move 
And then when she draws on her pelvic floor, try that again, breathing out, she gets a bit of tone. And you can see it's actually getting dragged down and a little bit actually south, which is perfect. And then if you here, you'll feel that little bit of tone. So the first thing we're talking about is not breath holding. The second thing is making sure that belly button doesn't, you know, you don't think about hollowing out through there. We don't want a hollow core. We want a flat, tight core and not having those ribs coming up and down. The other thing we want to make sure of is, is she is not um, working too hard. So she doesn't want to have, when you draw on that pelvic floor and you get that tone there, she doesn't want to crank it up so much that it actually kicks in more muscles like your obliques and she does, starts doming up. So we're going to show you that one. So if you draw down again for me, breathing out. So she draws down and if she keeps cranking it, keep going, she will start, see that? She fired up everything else. She fired up her six pack, which is the rectus abdominis and her obliques, and that made everything bulge out. Now that's what you need when you're going to lift something heavy, but not when you're trying to activate and switch on and prep those muscles. So pulling on too much is sometimes a bad thing. And again, if you pull on too much, you're going to start holding your breath again. All right. So let's retrack in. Let's relax again. Now to help you with trying to coordinate breathing and pelvic floor and transverse abdominis, I suggest what you do is you start off, is when you try and contract, you do it in repetitions. And you do it on the repetitions when you breathe out, all right? Not when you breathe in, all right? So she can take a breath in first and through her lungs and expand her ribs around here. Then when she breathes out, as she breathes out, she draws on her pelvic floor the same level. She breathes all the way out. She's drawing on her pelvic floor, tight as the tummy, and then she can let it gradually go when she breathes in again. So every breath in, breath out, she's actually activating and relaxing that pelvic floor, which activates and relaxes through her tummy here. Okay, so I suggest you try that at home when you start, is to breathe, on, breathe out and switch on because you may not have the endurance to hold it on for 10 or 20 seconds while you're breathing. That's the next stage. So the first thing you've got to try and do is just get this thing working, get the connection between holding a wee or pulling up internally and then tightening this. And it needs to be just a very small amount of tightness. Like I don't need to leave this rock hard. It's not about getting a rock hard six pack. It's about getting tone. And we call it about sort of 30% of your maximum. So if she does a maximum pull, okay, a maximum drive, she goes, okay, I need to back that down to about 30% of what I can do maximally. And that's roughly about what you need for some decent core activation on that. And anything layering on top of that is about demand for how much you lift. So the more you need to put on, the more you need to lift, the more you need to put on on top of that. And so the reason we're doing this is because that system has to be operating when you are lifting. You can't just brace on top. You have to have an internal system working on beforehand. Okay, now the beauty about this sort of stuff is we also use this light activation work to stop back spasming because when you switch all this on, you tend to get a bit of relaxation in any spinal muscles in the back. So if that's spasmy and sore from a back pain, this is one of the exercises we give to actually settle some of that back pain and get that, per that person out of spasm. Okay, so let's try that one more time. So we're going to take a breath in first, breathing out through here. So we breathe in, breathing out, and then drawing in. See that belly button just tucked down, tucks that way a little bit. There's the tone. Now, here we go. See if you can do that again. Take a breath in, breath out. She draws in. Perfect. Now, hold that and then keep breathing. So now what she's got to do is almost pat her head and rub her tummy is this needs to stay on. The pelvic floor needs to stay on. So she's got tone here, tone of pelvic floor, and then she tries to keep breathing in her ribs. So she needs to think about expanding the lower ribs, expanding around here, but keeping this on. And that's hard, but that is exactly what you've got to do when you're doing repetitions of squats or lifts or anything like that. You can't hold your breath the whole way through. You can't have this turning off and on all the way through. I want a low bit of tone here and breathing. So you're separating those systems, okay? And that's how you'll get that stability through your core and being able to breathe and be able to use your legs when you squat. Okay, so that's the final stage. I would practice that where you try and breathe for about 10 to 20 seconds, which is like a set of exercises, okay? While that is on, just still at the low level of pelvic floor 
transverse stomps about 30%, okay? And then we'll work on the bracing. I have a rest, all right? So hopefully you've got that so far. Now the last stage is to try and add on some bracing, okay? Now what I suggest you do, again, you learn it in lying down and then you've got to translate that all into standing. Now, when we do our lifting in our next video, I'll show you what to do, how to switch that on when we lift. But for today's situation, again, we're going to prep it. So she's got to take a breath in, she's going to breathe out, she's got to draw up her pelvic floor by holding a wee, get that tone there. And now she's going to keep that on because she's practiced, she can keep breathing. And now I'm going to cure her. When she breathes out next, she's going to do a very quick breath out like this, like that. And she's going to try and brace her spine, okay? So she's adding on rectus abdominis and obliques on top of what she's already got on and then still try and breathe. So it's a breath in and then a quick breath out. See that there? Did you see that belly button go boom, down it goes? And she's got to hold that and keep breathing. Okay, and then do it again. Breath out. Bang. Hold and breathe. Okay. So, and again. Now that quick breath out activates your external obliques. And the external obliques, like when you sneeze and you cough and that sort of thing, are your power for your stability. And so that's why you see sometimes when people are, and I'll show you in the next video, when they're lifting, they go like that when they lift. Or when a kickboxer kicks, just and they'll kick because they activate all their outer core muscles ready for impact or ready for load and that's what you've got to do on each repetition when we lift okay when you're lifting something at home you breathe out quick before you lift it okay and that's what will give you that stability and that strength and that support through there to prevent any further injury okay good one see you next time